Welcome to the Old Timer Centre. My name is Philip Tarrant and I'm going to be talking to you about this 2004 Mercedes SL350. It is in absolutely immaculate condition and has an impeccable service history. It's even got receipts for the last five or six services which is very good to have. It's done 91,000 kilometres. It's got a nice set of Continental tyres and the car's been very well looked after. It was serviced at Mercedes-Benz up until about 30,000 kilometres. It didn't do very many kilometres for the first nine years of its life but it looked like it was serviced every, every year despite doing such little kilometres which is very good to see. It's got the original wheels which is also a good thing. Some, some people put big 18, 19, 20, 21 inch wheels on the car which look great but it puts a whole lot of unnecessary strain on all the suspension components. Being a 2004 model it's actually got the 3.7 litre V6 which is the last of the 112 V6 engine and is very very reliable. It's also got the 5 speed gearbox which again was the last of the 5 speed gearbox which is also very reliable. In late 2005 and 2006 got the three and a half litre V6 engine and the seven speed gearbox which, uh, which certainly had more power but again being the first of a new engine and the first of a new gearbox they came with their fair share of, of issues as well. But this really is in absolutely beautiful condition. You have quite low running costs. It doesn't have hydraulic or air suspension it's just got coilover suspension and because it's got the very reliable engine and gearbox on the 2004 model there really should be absolutely no major issues whatsoever and you can look at the, all the recent receipts where you can see that it's just had tyres, brakes, oil changes you now things which they do need over time can be things like engine mounts and gearbox mounts which are just rubber components which wear out over time and they've actually all been done, which is why it's so silky smooth to drive. It does have the two original remote keys, memory electric drivers and passenger seat, Bluetooth compatibility, navigation, and I think it's incredible value for money. For an SL with 91,000 kilometres with such a good history. And look, the 500s are great, they sound better, they've got a bigger engine, they're faster. But with it comes a lot more expense in terms of fuel consumption, suspension components, etc. We'll just start it up. So with the 500 you've got a few settings here. You can where you can stiffen the suspension at the click of a button it can go up by about five or six centimetres as well. I find the approach angles on these are pretty good. They're much better than the 129, the previous model. Then we've got a cup holder. Dual zone climate control will open the roof. So just go like that. And the roof opens. It was the fastest convertible roof in the world when this model came out done. So if you look at some articles and they say that you know, in 2002 or 2003 when the SL500 that came out first was released it was the fastest convertible in the world. Um, they're not talking in terms of speed of the car, they're talking about the speed of the soft top or the hard top I should say. It's even got a wind deflector but if you've been looking for a very good example with a good history, two keys, immaculate condition, it's been garaged, looked after, Continental tyres, not cheap, cheap tyres, we all know what the brands are, 
where everything works perfectly this is it I'm sure you'll find some cheaper ones online but they're certainly not going to have this history they're not going to be in this condition and they're probably not going to have 91,000 kilometers they're probably going to have more like 130 or 150,000 k's even things like usually with a lot of these these are cracked from when people close the boot the hard top's in incredible condition and if you've got the soft top down and you think oh, I've got to, I want to put my golf clubs in simply press this switch thank you so you can see it's come up like that put your suitcase or your golf clubs whatever it is in the back once you've done that close great um, it, it really is a particularly good engine the reason why I keep talking about it is I've had a couple of cars with this same engine a lot of time you look at 350, 2004 and you think oh they all must be the same or 2005 but they're not the only cars that got this 3.7 litre V6 engine was the SL350, the ML350, not the 164, the 163, which finished in 2005, and the S350. So traditionally that engine went on the bigger cars, the ML, the S class. So this actually has plenty of power because it's not as heavy as a S-Class 350 long or short wheelbase and it's a lot lighter than the ML. SL usually specially design things like their wheels, their exhaust system, sometimes like with the R129 series in the 90s you look at the wheels and think oh that's the same wheel that's on a 300SE or a 300E. They're actually different wheels, different offsets, and they were specially designed to fit to the SL with the size of the brakes and the offset. So despite being a 350, it's got a very good sound to it. Some would say it's a, it sounds like a V8. Um, I wouldn't. Um, you'll also notice that if you're looking at other SL 350s for sale, a lot of people have put 500 badges on it this one I haven't done that luckily it's got the original badge on it and really is just a, a very nice car if you have any specific questions about it please give me a call you can contact us on 02-9569-9999 my name is Philip I'll be more than happy to help you with any questions you might have you can also speak to Richard um, I drove the car home last night so I can talk to you about how it drives as well uh, we have in-house finance, we can transport vehicles into state and we're only 15 to 20 minutes from Sydney Airport. Thanks so much for watching and we look forward to hearing from you shortly.